This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm your host, J. Anthony Gilbert, created for purpose. That's today on Real Life. It's Monday here on Real Life, and Don and Terry are out enjoying a day off on this Memorial Day. But we're here, the presence of God is here, the Word of God is here, and we've got an exciting show for you today. But I'm with my host, Amy. Hi, Jay. How are you? I'm good. How are you on this Memorial Day? Oh, isn't it great just to take a day off and, and remember the, the men and the women that gave their life for our yeah. freedom and our, our country? No greater love Amen. do we have than this than to lay down our life for a brother. So thank you to all who served and have served and for those family members that have given everything so that we live today free. We have freedom of speech, if That's you think right. about it, Jay, to tell people about Jesus Christ because of people that fought for that for us. Amen. And with the freedom of speech, also freedom of religion as yes, well. Yes. People have laid down their lives. You know, we don't take the time to always be thankful for the freedoms we have. And we should never use our freedoms as an opportunity just to do what we want. Somebody died yes. that we can have the freedoms we have today, that we can worship the way we want to worship, we can preach what we want to preach. It allows Cornerstone to take the, the gospel of Jesus Christ across the television airways without any fear or worries or any such thing. Right. So my grandpa was, um, he was a prisoner of war. He was missing in action. Wow. And I had this little grandma who would pray for him. His whole platoon in Germany had been shot. They had all been killed. And my papa laid there with shrapnel in his back. Wow. And the Germans came and got my papa. They said, we'll be back to, to do surgery on you tonight. And he thought, they're going to leave me here to die. They came back, did surgery on him, returned him back to the United States, and ultimately he made it home because of a little wow. praying grandma. You know why? Wow. Because everybody, yes, Amen. Amen. everybody Amen. was created for a purpose, and God has a purpose and a plan for every human being. Yes, he does. And you know what? You have a great story there. My grandfather was in World War II, mm -hmm. but you know what? If you have a parent, grandparent, or somebody that was in the war or in a war, Take time to talk with them and to mm -hmm. thank them and yes. find out their stories. One of the things that I regret is that I never took the time mm -hmm. to talk with my grandfather about the stories that he shared. So I think that's really awesome that you had that. And you know what I find too? Like even talking with my dad was in Vietnam, my other grandpa's in World War One and Korean. I mean, they they don't like to talk about it Some a lot. Don't. You're right. I mean, and, yeah. and what they what at least my dad always says it was just an honor to serve. And yeah. he was a Navy corpsman, and he had to deal with the wounded and and dead bodies. And he just says I wasn't the one that gave everything. They did. Wow. And so it, just thank you for serving. Thank you for giving your life for us. And you know what? Memorial Day is a time for us to be able to look at the people that have come before us and no greater person can we also celebrate yeah. on this Memorial Day who laid down his life for us yep. than Jesus Christ. Right. He laid down his life for us that you and I could have the freedom from sin, yes. freedom from bondage, poverty, depression. Yes. He paid the total Sickness. price for everything, yes. sicknesses, everything. And this is a time for us to celebrate and remember all that Christ has done for us. That's right, yeah. Anything we could ever need, Amen. ever, Amen. In our entire lifetime, Christ has already provided for us. When he said it is finished, he said it is a done That's deal. Right. The curse has been broken off of your life. And now we're, we walk in freedom and in liberty, ultimately because of Jesus Christ and the price that he paid and the, his life that he gave. And it took him pouring out his blood, yeah. laying down his life like mm -hmm. so many other people have done our veterans and war heroes, so many people that have gone out before us and been willing to pay the price so you and I can have the freedoms that we have. Yeah. Let's take a look at God's word for today. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 
We have been created for a purpose. God fashioned you and me in the image of his son. He also knows the entire story of our lives. He knows the beginning, middle, and end. We do not know our future life story, but by trusting in God's grace, we can walk with confidence, knowing that our purpose is to serve him. Our destiny is to reflect the image of Christ working in our lives. He has good works for us to complete. You know, that's so exciting to know that we're his workmanship. You know what I love about that passage as well? Mm -hmm. Is that it's not about you or me. Right. It's about what he does within us. He, yeah, and, and think about all the people that are wondering around, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't even know if God has a purpose for me. Or Quit saying that. That's right. Speak these words out that I, w I am his workmanship Amen. created for good works. God has a good work for me to do. God has a purpose for me to do. God has a reason for my existence. That's the right. reason I wake up every day and breathe. There is a purpose for everything and everyone under the sun. That's right. And that's the reason why you can't contemplate suicide. Right. You can't contemplate even abortion That's right. because it is the purpose Amen. of God being manifested in the earth. Mm -hmm. So you know what? Even if right now you're in a very, very low spot, realize that God makes everything beautiful yes. in its time. Do you know that there is purpose even in your pain? What you, God has chosen you to walk through what you're walking through right now because he has a purpose that is going to bless your life and others. Yeah. And you know what? If you're struggling right now and going through a rough time and maybe it's just a difficult season that you're in and you're even asking, what's my purpose? Why am I here? Pick up your phone right now, 888-665-4483. Call our prayer partners. You know what's so awesome? We're here to minister to you, to be a blessing to you, to encourage you, pick up that phone and call right now. There are prayer partners standing by, ready to believe God with you for your breakthrough. It reminds me of the great wisdom of Solomon in, in Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything Amen. under the sun and a season for everything. Help me remember, there's a time to to, to live, to a time live, to die, die a to time sow, to give. Yeah, more and a time to dance. Man, we've got dancers coming up on this show. You're not going to want to miss it. So really, the moms have something to say. How do you stop an unhealthy habit before it becomes a big deal? That is right now on Mom Talk. Welcome, moms, to another episode of Mom Talk. Today, we're talking about how do you stop an unhealthy habit from getting worse? Mm, yeah. I'm your host, Michelle, and with me today, we have Carly mm -hmm. and Judy. Hi. So when it comes to unhealthy habits, what do we do to stop them? Yeah, we have to stop. Uh -huh. <laughs> so for me, uh, my unhealthy habit is sometimes my words, my mouth, Things I say, they could be very unhealthy because um, it's easy just to spew out of emotion, right. what you're feeling or things that happen. So, you know, it's, it's an old saying, think before you speak, and it's very true for me. And that's the habit that I really want to create is the good things to say. And, you know, yeah, as I, I do, but emotion can get into play with it. Yes. Right. So it's very important to just, you know, stop think before you speak Amen. and it works. The power of our words, as we all know, is it's just huge. It's, huge. Oh, it's not something it's to take huge. lightly. So right. that's a, definitely a habit I need, I need to change. But let's hear what uh, Christine has to say in her video. If you have a bad habit you need to conquer, the best thing to do is to conquer it with a good habit. Set yourself a goal. The last few months, I have not been able to exercise on a regular basis and my waistline is showing it. So today, even though it's wet and rainy out, I am here walking around this track trying to reach my goal of 10,000 steps for the day. So that's my advice for you. If you have a bad habit you need to conquer, fill it with the good one. Uh, that is yeah, so yeah, very yeah, true. Yeah. That's so important. I know for me, my bad habit is that I'm a yes person. Yeah. Uh, I say yes to everything. And I've gotten into a really bad habit of saying yes to my kids when they want to do like a million activities. We've got basketball, football, cheerleading, mm. soccer. We've got camps now coming up I with the know, summer. Geez. And I have had to learn to say no. So what I've started doing to kind of help curb that unhealthy mm -hmm. habit is my calendar. Mm. 
and I have different colors for my kids. So when I start seeing this kind of rainbow effect happening on my calendar, right. I know it's time for me to start saying Back no. Up. That is exactly. really smart. Yes. You said no to me in a message yesterday. Yes, I did. Good job. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So it's become really important to right. figure out a method for me to stop that habit. Right. So I know now when I see the rainbow, well, I've got to stop stuff. That's good. Yes. I notice for us when I when we start having these unhealthy attitudes and oh, actions, attitudes there's one. two things that usually I notice is first of all we're too busy uh, yeah. so how we conquer that is we just cut things off the there calendar you like yes. you right. said yes. and we just have family time that's calm yeah. at home yeah. and also mom and dad what are what's going on with us like yeah. our children ma they, they mimic of our yes. behavior yes. Yes. so I need to look into myself and uh, most likely my husband and I have to yeah. look at each other and be like Wow, are they picking that up from us? Amen. Yes. So we yes. need to change that. Do they need to see us working through that? Right. Yes. So that is a way that we kind of conquer unhealthy habits when we see them reflecting what we've been doing. So like a habit of working together, really. Yes, yes, yes. addressing example. it and working it out loud in front of them so That's they then good. know how to conquer it. That's have you good. seen you know? the kids, since you do have a daughter and boys, have you yes. seen like Evangelina? like mimic how you are with oh, yeah. your, okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. that's that mirror yeah, image we have with And daddy kids. has too, yeah. he's reminded me several times. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have to work on that and it's okay because we're growing just as our children are growing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's good for them to see us conquer these habits. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And I know that as parents, it's very hard for us to see that mirror image through our children right, especially, right. but that's our, our sign from God to mm -hmm. go, whoa, wait a minute, look at what you're doing, yeah. look at how you're feeding that into the next generation, yeah. and we, it, that's our responsibility right. that we have to fix that. Right. So here at Mom Talk, we believe Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, that says two are far better than one mm -hmm. because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today. We thank you so much for everything. Bye. Bye. Unhealthy habits. <laughs> Everybody has them. But you know what's great to know is that if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. But if you want something you've never had, do something that you've never done. Stop doing what you're doing. Start making adjustments and changes in your life and watch what God can do. I want to know what your bad habit is that you need to change. Well, you know what? My bad habit is that I got to stop eating bad. Like bacon. bacon. I, was, I was like, is bacon my bad habit? Me, sodas, things like that. I don't know if they're habits or not, but they're things that we do that we probably need to change, though. Iced tea. All those and nitrates. I'm telling you, if Jesus will never tell me, Amy, put down that iced tea. That is my... <laughs> gift from God for life. <laughs> Man, we are so excited. Listen, if you do have a bad habit, give it over to the Lord. I mean, Amen. really, there are some bad habits that could cost you your life. That's so right. really ask like, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? Show me what is a bad habit that, that could get into sort of an addiction. And let me stop it right now in Jesus' name. One thing you can do is you can dance. <laughs> If you're in a Amen. bad habit, turn on the music and dance. We're so excited to have, uh, you know, Johanna here. And we're talking about dance revelation. And we're going to have some girls dancing for you. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Interested in short-term missions? Join Cornerstone Cares teams as they go all around the world, spreading God's love in action. Well, if you go on a Cornerstone Cares trip, you're going to meet new cultures, new people. You're going to do some things you've never done before. You're going to have the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. And most of all, you're going to meet Jesus in a new way as you come to the culture that he's called you to. I wasn't sure what to bring, what to give, but the short time I've spent with him, I've realized that it's just, just being here, just showing love. It doesn't matter what type of situation you're in, doesn't matter how much money you make, what you do, God's love touches you everywhere. God can use me and God can use anybody. If you'd like to go on a Cornerstone Cares mission trip, go to ctvn.org and ask for more information. Cornerstone Cares. We are God's. We are God's love. God's love in action.
Hey ladies, I have some great news for you. The women of the Cornerstone team have joined together to make a special journal just for you. It's the Cornerstone Take 10 Journal. It's a 21-day prayer journal designed to help us all grow as women of God. Each day begins with 10 minutes of inspiration, life coaching, encouragement, and journal time. May Partners, call today with your gift to the ministry for this brand new devotional written by the women of Cornerstone for the women in your life. Take 10 journal, you're gonna to wanna to get one. Call us today. Hey, you are in for a special treat today. Amen. Johanna Leach is here and she leads Dance Revelation, a godly dance studio and training center in Mechanicsburg, PA. That's a long title <laughs> of a city. And they brought some of their dancers, no way with them. And they're gonna perform for us in just a moment. But before we get to dancing, let's hear more about Dance Revelation. Welcome to Rip Life 360. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. It is so nice to have you. Last time you were here talking about your book, Created with a purpose. Created with purpose. Created with purpose. It was so good. Great book. You want to get that. <laughs> but today you're talking about dance revelation. Mm -hmm. Where did it come from? Dance revelation. Where did it come from? It came from nothing <laughs> in the beginning. Um, I started dance revelation when I was 21, mm -hmm. um, and actually started it in the parents of my basement, my parents' basement. Yeah. And we had a little small studio, and um, my dad. Randy Clark uh, founded Global Awakening, and yes. it's actually underneath Global Awakening, a part of that ministry. Okay, and so explain Global Awakening so everyone knows what you're talking about. Okay, Global Awakening um, was founded by Randy Clark, mm -hmm. um, and it has grown so much mm -hmm. since it first was founded. Yeah. Um, I could go on forever, yeah. but 1994, uh, my dad, Randy Clark, was used in revival. Yeah. And through that, he was launched into ministry full time. Mm -hmm. Not only was he running um, a church and pastoring a church, but he was traveling yes. um, and was being used to go to different churches, mm -hmm. pray for the sick, and spread the, you know, the love of the Lord. And um, so fast forward so uh -huh. many years, um, it, w it went from about three to four employees to now 50 to 60 employees. Wow. Yeah. And within Global Awakening are many different ministries that mm -hmm. serve the same vision and purpose. Yes. Um, and so within that, um, our dance school is a part of the ministry, mm -hmm. um, reaching more of the community. So Global Awakening is more global mm -hmm. and going all around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, it still also has um, a ministry school on campus mm -hmm. uh, where people will come from the community and from around the world, um, yeah. whereas the dance school is just really serving the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. wow. Wow. So yeah. ministry flows through the family, we see. Yeah. And uh, do you consider what you're doing in the dance studio ministry? Oh, yes. Also. I think, well, I think anything that you do, you know, sharing the love of the Lord and constantly just leaking the Holy Spirit, you know, where you, where you go, you, you are ministering to people. Mm -hmm. um, I feel as though we're reaching a pocket of people in our community that other ministries may not, you know, we, we are targeting just the dancers. And so when someone wants to dance, you know, they look for a great dance school. Right. And because of our excellence in training um, and focus on, you know, producing amazing women, yes. um, I think people are drawn to our school. And through that, we are able to minister to families just by how we teach and how we love and uh, we do so many different things outside of the dance room, yeah. if that makes sense. So, Is we'll, it just for women, though? Because I heard you say for oh, yeah. women. No, we do have boys. Okay, yeah. I just, we have a few boys. We would love more okay. men. You know, we would love, love more. Um, but we probably have about six or seven. Okay. You have men. to have like a whip and a nay nay class. My boys yeah. are all the time like, <laughs> yeah. Mom, I'm like, what da new dance is this? You know, yeah. they, I mean, my boys actually really like to dance a lot. <laughs> yeah. So is your school a Christian school, faith-based school? Do it's you let everybody knew, yeah, know everyone that? Everyone comes. Um, it, it is faith-based organization. We don't plaster that. We are strictly right. a Christian school. We, we use secular music. We, mm -hmm. you know, we train dancers to yeah. be the best dancers. And so um, there is other courses people can take to expand beyond just dance, such as learning how to worship dance wow. and how, you know, to... Um, worship dance, explain that. Yeah, so how to express your love for the Lord through your 
gift of dance. Um, and so we, we explore that a lot in a lot of our classes now. So even students who dance uh, many, many classes out of the week, they're somehow in a class at some point where we're exploring Im improv mm -hmm. dancing, impro improvisation. Yeah. And that is like worship dance, where you yeah. just take the tools that you have yeah. and you just totally release yourself yeah. from the, um, everything has to be perfect mm -hmm. and this and that and just kind of just let your love for dance go, but then you, you give it to God yeah. and you focus on him and you worship him. So. Well, yeah. obviously we know that while they're dancing, they're impacting the lives of those that are viewing, yes. but what type of impact have you had in your students' lives? Well, my perspective would be I've had a huge impact on training. Um, I always say I love to teach dance, but I feel as though I've really trained um, the young women and girls to um, build their character, to have great character, wow. and to wow. leave you know, the school to be amazing students in college or you know, to... Uh, if they're going to go to ministry school, how, how they're just going to be a ser servant heart, you know, and first one there, last one to leave, and how can I help, and um, how can I stop and just pray for this person, or, you know, so I think that I've, because the way I just love life and speak goodness into them and who they are and build them up and then take them out, and we do tons of different gatherings such as a Bible study or a sleepover. You know, we just had one this weekend and just different moments that we can just love on them. I think that we've been able to really um, strengthen all the girls' character and, awesome. and boys too, but wow. yeah. So earlier on Mom Talk, we were talking about bad habits. Yeah. And we, you have two girls here that are going yeah. to dance for us and you said it kind of ties in with the song yeah, that they're doing. Yeah, it was so crazy, yeah. So I choreographed this piece, it's called Into the Light. It's to a song called um, Fix You by Coldplay. Okay. And the concept is there's someone who's in bad habits, habitual sin, or just can't get out of something that's just weighing them down. And the other person, Maddie, is dancing, and she's grace, she's the light, she's the love, she's, you know, representing the, the Father's love. And that, you know, let me, let me take that from you and for you. So. Wow, wow. We're going to wow. learn a lot through dance right now. Here is Madison and Lauren with Into the Light. But you don't succeed When you get what you want But not what you need When you feel so tired But you can't sleep Stuck in rivers And the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace When you love someone but it goes to waste Could it be worse? Lights
you have it. Dance Revelation doing their thing. It was so awesome. And it's time for people to come into the light. Into the light. That's what it's all about. And if you think about it, dance is universal. It, it speaks not just one language, but to all languages. That was beautiful, Johanna. You. Did you choreograph that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. But I mean, I choreographed it, but they are so inspiring. Yeah. And so they help, you know, just their talent and their gifting. I love, they inspire me to yeah. create that. And so I'm so thankful. Created, yeah, awesome. like we said earlier, created for workmanship, Amen. created yeah. by God Amen. for a purpose. And their purpose was to dance. Now I can yeah. dance right. too, y'all. <laughs> little, it's bad. <laughs> it's so bad. But I'm telling you, God wants to reach people where they're at with right. their passions, right? Amen. He doesn't want to force you into some niche that's not you. He has a passion and a purpose for your life. And it's time for you to find your passions today. Find out what God has called you to do and step into what it is that God has for you. You know, it's time to come out of the darkness and into the light today. And I hope that you were inspired by them and that you'd have a heart and a desire now to get closer to Jesus. And if you want to accept Christ as your savior and you want to come out of darkness and into the light, maybe you've been crying and going through a rough time, Jesus Christ is right there. Pick up that phone right now and dial 888-665-4483. Yeah. Let our prayer partners come into agreement with you and believe God with you for salvation in your life. Yeah. God wants to breathe life in you. He wants to see you dance in life again. You know, we're excited tomorrow on Real Life, another miracle in American history and author Pam Neasley Fleming shares her story of lemons and lace. Amen, amen. So we want to thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. There's going to be more with you in a moment. So yes. what do we have to look forward to maybe in the next segment? Yeah, we have two more dances. And we actually get to see, uh, get to speak with the dancers, interview them and talk Ooh. with them. Amen, yeah. amen. So stay yeah. tuned because on 360, we've got more with Dance Revelation. We've got good news with Sydney. And we want to take a moment just to pray with you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every yes. viewer right now that's struggling with the darkness and struggling with whatever it is that they're going through. We thank you for deliverance, breakthrough, and freedom in their life today. Yes. And Father, we just thank you right now that not one person leaves this television broadcast the same way they came. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Remember, Jesus came to give you abundant life. We'll see you next time here on Real Life.